Hello, 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 everybody. We are back with the second part in Turnabout Sisters. So let's get it started. We're on the trial. The court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fair. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I'd better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Lord. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence that she committed this murder. And we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin then. You may call your first witness. That that's totally that that right there. Mistake number one. The judge is totally the one who's saying that, not Edgeworth. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene of the detective gumshoe. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir! My name is Dick Gumshoe, sir! Well, I'm the detective in charge of homicide down at the Benedict, sir! Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir! Let me use this full map of the office to explain. The body was found by this window here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir! The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue. Floor plans added to the court record. Now, detective. Yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe, please testify to the court about this hard evidence. phone call came in, I rushed to the scene of the crime. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. The very moment, you say? Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Let's examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh! Bump. Hey, Mai just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness's testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked lots of times. Heh, <laughs> I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. Alright, let's give this a try. Let's do this thing! Something the matter? No, Your Honor, I'd like to begin my cross-examination. She missed the bottom drop. Man. just one second. Yeah! If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? D did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. 
Exactly what about this suspicious woman in pink's claim was hard evidence? What? Miss May isn't suspicious. She sure isn't pink, pal. Well, I, I guess she is pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um... Hmm, I guess pressing can have its advantages. I feel like we've fallen into a trap. I feel like we have fallen into a trap. I know we've fallen into a trap. Yes. Yeah! Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. Witness testimony! After securing, after securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written in a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results show that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was a blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. I'm totally getting my voice for him confused so badly. How do you like that? That's my hard evidence. Keep wanting to change it, it probably shouldn't. Hmm. Before we begin cross examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Y Your Honor? Why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence for the first time? <laughs> uh, I, I know, I'm real embarrassed I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well, the defense may begin its cross-examination. This time, I know exactly what he got wrong. But... Edric is going to be an evil, evil, evil son of a bitch at this. And that should not have gone off. I know what's it? See this autopsy report? Death was instantaneous! So, you're a liar! <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You said that the victim, Maya Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fey. Correct? I, I meant Mia the first time, I'm sorry guys. That's really what you're saying? What, what, what? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. Backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. Is there a report from your department, detective? Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But no butting your way out of this one, detective. Order! Order! The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have time to write anything down. Objection. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? When? All of these are wrong, so, uh, we did get it the day after the murder. It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being... That autopsy report is outdated, John. What? We're one? It's two days after the murder! It can't be that outdated! What? A 
second autopsy report was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to no from blood force trauma, but there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. You little bitch, Edgeworth! I received these results this morning. You're a little bitch, Edgeworth! N -n no way! Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. That is all. I see. Damn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. We all should have known. Why, Mr. Wright, you look short. Something you ought to say? You're a sham, Edgeworth. Mr. Edgeworth. I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. What reason could you possibly have had to request a second autopsy report? Mr. Wright, the defense were arraigned for personal attacks on the prosecution. Ah, uh, it's not really a personal attack, it's a professional attack. Mr. Wright, say what you will, the evidence will in this report is undeniable. Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Uh, understood. The court accepts the evidence. Autopsy report updated in the court record. Well, Your Honor, the evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Darn! This isn't good! The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. I wouldn't call her poor nor innocent. Let the witness Miss April May take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? It's a very good question, Mr. Wright. Witness your name, please. April May, at your service. I, I'm, I'm also mixing up her voice. What voice was I using for her? Order! One oh, introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. Witness will refrain from one tone winking. Aw, yes, Your Honor. I feel like she's supposed to be a bit higher. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in the court. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Um, gee. I was, like, in my hotel room. <laughs> I checked in right after lunch, and this hotel is directly across from Faye and Co. Law Offices. Um, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. Witness testimony. It was like nine at night. I looked out the window, you know? And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and, and she hit her. Then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. Oh, you little bitch. I see. It is remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any. Mother F you! I get to cross examine you, your, your honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. What about my cross-examination? 
I thought the witness testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand that you were Miss Mia Faye's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. You little douchebag! Hey, how dare you! Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? No! 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 I pressed the wrong button! I'm sorry, guys! Oh, I'm gonna have to redo this, aren't I? I've never accidentally pressed the wrong point. Wait, hold on! Mr. I changed your mind. Will you cross-examine the witness? Yes, yes! Okay, I've never done that before, so uh, that was intriguing. I better, or I'll lose on the spot. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. What happens when you click stuff by accident? Oh, you little totty. Oh, I, I keep wanting that slumped part, but no, that, that's the last part of the testimony. know it was my client. Huh? Well, I... gee. First of all, she had a girl's physique. And secondly, she was... she was small. Who else could it be but her? Hey, question your freaking testimony. That is freaking vague. Wh what? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that you're lying. Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? You... Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Yeah, what's the meaning? Somebody tell me, because I'm clueless about this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, my faith, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her for seek. Really true. It's totally true. I love how her eyes twitch. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis except her. And I'm no expert in fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal for me. However, the witness testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. What? What? Still, we do not know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her, and so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Rawr! What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I, I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please admit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl. I promise. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. Witness account. I, I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then that girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. Hippie clothes? But she hit her with that weapon. I saw it, I did. That, that clock, um, the kind of sketchy clock, the thinker, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? Kitty? <laughs> oh, the accuracy of your report tells me you're a freaking lying bitch. Uh-huh. I wish you had only been so detailed from the beginning. 
Please begin the cross examination. Oh yeah, I'm gonna cross examine you because you are a liar. And if you guys didn't catch what she was lying about the first time. This! She knows it's a clock! That is the number one clue whenever anybody knows it's a clock. Objection. That you're a liar! Miss May. What did you ju say just now it was quite revealing. Revealing? Ooh, you like that one, you naughty lawyer. You just said that this statue of the finger was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock, too. And he was found guilty of murder by me, obviously. Bitch! Order! Order! Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Ooh, uh. The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concern. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. No, no! But questions are I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I caught murderers! I caught one! I caught one! Yeah, you know you won. Objection to stand. You may continue to question the witness. Whee! That was fun! You shot me dead. I will be over. To my question. What? That, that, that's because I heard it. Yes, I heard it say the time. So you've been to the law offices? No. Hi, I didn't say that. Why do I need to go there? I heard it from my hotel room. <laughs> The law offices at Bering Co. where the murder took place are very close to the hotel. She could have easily heard the clock. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, I'm not! No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because it couldn't have wrong. Your Honor, members of the court, it is Inconceivable that the clock in question rang. It's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork! How could you possibly? You just have to look as soon as you can. Oh! See anything interesting, Your Honor? Because that's the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar! Because I can't say more horrible words, even though this game is... Rated P. I'm positive we could have put some something better than that. Fat? Well, Miss May. Oh, Edgeworth, Edgeworth, you douche. He's very good at this, at, at, like pit, nitpicking me. Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. 
Indeed, the clock was empty. As you say, it can't be. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the windows heard the clock, then there's no contradiction. Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Joanna. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Oh, Edgeworth, ho oh, oh. ho, impossible, of course. I can totally prove it. I have freaking proof. W what? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is my little phone call. Take that! Hmm? That's a very cute cell phone. Ooh, ooh, you have a girly phone? Wait, wait, wait this isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. Of a recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder! Drama! Order! Order! The, the defendant's cell phone? This, this, this wasn't put to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe is missing? Gumshoe, the my heart goes out to you, Edward. Let's hear the conversation. So, you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you, then? If you could? Huh, I should probably tell you. The clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working. That's lame. I had to take the clock work out. Sorry. September 5th, 927 a.m. Your Honor, I think the recording makes it clear that the clockwork was already gone. And this was recorded in the morning before the witness even arrived at her hotel. <laughs> well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? How did you know that the weapon was a clock? Dot, 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 dot. Well, um, well, isn't it obvious? I, I saw the clock before. Um, what store was that again? I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. So the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. Freaking no, it does not. No, I object. I object! Yes, I freaking object. The witness claimed she had seen it before. But this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen the clock before. The clock itself! It's simple. This clock was never in a store, ever. But what? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody. I impossible! Everything is sold in stores! Miss May, I think it's high time you, you went shopping for a better excuse. I love his witty comebacks! Oh? Excuse is not on sale today. Oh! Oh! <laughs> This is where she goes cray cray! What's it to you, Porky Gun Head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it! DIE! What? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. Oh, 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 S silly me. D did I, um, like, lose it? I, I guess I did. <laughs> Scary. 
Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? No talking. Hmm. Oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor, allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss Abel May, you knew the weapon was a clock because you had heard about it. The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence producing that the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. You little wiretap! See, lady? This is why you should never leave your hotel room with evidence. Have a look at this. Ah! Oh! <laughs> that is... <laughs> I found this in Miss May's room. Oh, nobody is uh, worried that I, I, I was in somebody's room looking for stuff. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were tapping the victim Miss Mia Fay's phone, were you not? Oh! Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that were the case, which it's not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say the weapon was a clock on the phone? Did you not just hear I presented a phone conversation that said that exact thing? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah? I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is on the cell phone conversation. Duh. I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on to for me. Again? What's it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like the statue of the thinker, and it tells you the time. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. La, la, urgh. Witness, please answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May. Shut up, all of you. What gives you the right to talk to me? You, you lawyer. All of you are ganging up on me like that. Oh, so I'm the bad girl. Is that it? Is that it? <laughs> that did it. The court's seeing the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final... Miss May. What's it to you, you little shrimp? Talk to me in that tone of voice, will ya? You killed her, didn't you? Oh, I, I'm laughing. I am just with left field. Left freaking field. I should not have done that, but I love this part. What? How can you possibly say that? Are you mad? All I did was a little Wyatt. But see, it tricks her in the same way, so you admit you tapped her phone. 
Yeah! But wait, I didn't do anything bad like murder. I'm a good girl. Really? Can you prove it? No way. You think you're so smart, Mr. Lawyer. But I can prove it, and I will. You can't be serious, no way. Way, I say, way. Oh, and I assure you, I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. <laughs> okay, so the killing happened around 9 at night. Why, that's when I was getting room service from that sweet bellboy. Room service? Ice coffee, I believe it was. Ice coffee, you know, like normal coffee, but cold? If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts and then you have regular cold coffee. Ice coffee? Think I'm making this up? Asked the bellboy. Ergo, the witness was not on the scene of, at the time of the murder. Ah! I want that bellboy in here now! Because I will laugh at you, Edgeworth, once I get that bellboy. It is my great pleasure to inform you that the witness appears to be touching the victim's phone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Miss Maya Fay, commit murder. No, they're gonna let her just walk away! There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well, come on, think of something. Call the bellboy. Call the bellboy. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious there, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've something quiet low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. But why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. You're an evil, Ed. You're freaking evil. Condition. If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy. Oh, sorry about that. Then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer. Thus, she is innocent. Therefore, you must accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Fay. That is my condition. <laughs> what? I'd better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. No shit, Sherlock! What should I do? We'll accept the condition because, obviously, we need that bellboy. Alright, I got nothing to lose except for, well, everything. Understood. I accept your condition. Hmm. Cool. You fell right into my trap. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm okay. Nope, no waiting. Very well. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Yes, sir. I want to do, I want to do a regal accent thing. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. That tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. Bellboy 
at the fine Gatewater Hotel in business for four generations. I believe I received a call around eight in the evening from my guest Miss May. She asked for a night's coffee to be brought to her at nine on the dot set. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course. And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss Moore herself. I see. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Right. I'm ready, I hope. Exactly, and most definitely, sir, knowing him. How can you be so sure? Miss May was quite insistent that it be brought then. Oh, well, boy, to he, I'd like to lick the iced coffee, exactly nine o'clock. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on the door at the crack of night, sir. Why would she be, she be so particular about the time? You are sure it was Miss April May herself? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir. It is an endearing mannerism. How come you're so very certain? Oh, well, when I brought the room service, sir. She, she, the guest, sir, uh, favor me with, with, um, an embracer, sir. Embracer? Is that a French for embrace? It's French for kiss, sir. But not a French kiss, sir. More of a put on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by my grim demeanor. Sir. It was a moment I shall never forget, sir. Sounds pretty fishy to me. Da da da, it's no good! There's nothing there. Is that it? Oh, Edgeworth! You little douche! Finally, you understand? This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. Oh, hello though! Oh, it was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. Frick no! I can't let this happen! Uh, we're, we're protesting. Wait, please wait. Yes, does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. You little douchebag, Edgeworth. Your Honor, I must object. This charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright. I'll give you one more question, that's all. Okay. This is really it now. This is my last chance. What do I ask him about? Um, chicken. Tell me about chicken. Tell me about when you checked in this way. Oh, all right. Very well, sir. My first thought was that she was a beautiful, beautiful person. She was just my type of girl, so it was a disappointment, really. I see. 
excuse me, what exactly was a disappointment? Well, I am not without charm, sir, but even I have no chance with a lover there. What did he say? What did you say? Ah, oh, oh, uh, rather, quite. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Did Miss May check in with another person? You evil Edward! I object! That was objectionable! Ah, uh -uh. Yep, judge having none of it. Objectionable rules. The witness will answer the question. Uh, yes, you see, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, sir, you, uh, you didn't ask. Nice try! That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Ah, uh, yes, quite. Indeed. It was the, uh, good barista over there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... Oh! Oh! He asked me not to mention it if I wasn't specifically asked, so... You got caught, Edgeworth! You fool! Miss April may check into a twin, twin room with a man, correct? Yes, sir. Then, when you brought them room service, you didn't see the man in the room? That's right, sir. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In this new light, I hold that it is impossible to judge the defendant. You agree, Mr. Edgeworth? You better agree with me. Who? Who is this other person? Simple. It was the man with Miss May! The man who checked in with Miss May! Oh, he does not like that. Your Honor, it has been previously revealed Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone. Yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. My, what a convenient little supper. Set up. But it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who tried to hide the presence of this other man from the court! Oof. Oh, Edgeworth! Upstart! Amateur! These accusations are... ludicrous! Nap, nap, I win, you lose, let's live. The court acknowledges the defense argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look fully into this matter. Am I understood? Y yes, your yes, your honor. That is all for today for the trial of my affair. Court is adjourned. Yeah, just slam the gavel down. We're good. Mr. Wright! You were amazing in there! Really? I think I might be your newest fan! Oh, I was just doing my job, you know? <laughs> then again, that other attorney was pretty cool, too. Huh? That face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips. It sent shivers down my spine! Hmm. If you say so. So, what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Nope, we got another day. Well, no. I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May. He's the kid. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard they arrested her. Guess she's learning her charms won't work ever. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, 
This case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm going to find out more about that man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis. Don't worry. I'll find him by tomorrow. I promise. I'm counting on you. I asked for a full record of Miss April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that got left on record. I don't know how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in that detention center. It's up to me to get her free. And there we have it, guys. End of part two. We will be continuing in the next end of part two of this chapter. So we will be continuing on from this point next time. Hope to catch you guys all again. And press that like button. Press it. Press it. See you later, everybody.